Hi everyone. Hi guys. We're back again in our lovely loft of joy. Yeah. Uh, it's lovely to see you. Both wearing pink ties, by the way. We, are, we try hard for you to coordinate, yeah. and what can we say? Yeah, lucky, lucky. People want us for our fashion tips. Today is not what I would call summer anymore. No. It's, so where are we heading? It's definitely autumn slash fall. Yeah. So this is, I know a lot of people like to do these lists before the start of the season, but this is our autumn slash fall yeah. um, uh, top 10 or, or, or our fragrance selection of what we've actually been wearing yes. as the um, winter has turned, as the weather has turned a little bit colder. That's it. And we really want to make the point at the outset, don't we? This is just what we've been wearing. It's not like a definitive top 10 because um, we do get, occasionally get comments saying, oh, you've missed out this and this and this, yeah. why not? It's because this we're just not wearing, wearing them. Yeah. yeah, this is what we've been wearing the last couple of weeks. We're sharing that with you because we love these things. But I will say, I mean, I found it really easy to come up with things for this because as soon oh, as the weather likewise. got colder, I mean, we spent a long time in our spring and summer videos going, actually, yes, we do. We, yeah, we're fine wearing these kind of lighter oh. things. But actually, as soon as the weather We were lying. Colder, yeah, we were lying. Oh, my God. <laughs> we weren't lying. We didn't yeah. realise it at the time. But as it's got colder, there are a few fragrances where I've yeah. really thought, oh, yes, now I can wear this. Now it's got a little bit colder. Most, bit of, most of us kind of frag heads, as we're called, are like autumn winter heavy yeah, aren't we with our yeah. collections these things get resinous yeah. and warm and leathery and tobacco-y maybe that's, so that's where we're after we're going to choose five fragrances each we don't know what uh, each other has picked no so we, may, we could overlap we, we may overlap, overlap. Um, um so you do you want to go first i'll go okay i'll go first okay these are not in any particular order but they will be in just a second so i'm going over to my case so i'm sorry to go out of shop but this is part <laughs> of the fun that you get dan yeah. he's far yeah, more yeah. attractive than i am um right so we're going to start i think in the traditional way with number five. Um, so this is a little guy from the house of Lartisan, Zing. Oh. Which I've just worn, it's not a lot, but I've worn like two or three times in the last couple of weeks. Very often in the evening, we were talking about this earlier, like having a little evening shower and going mm. to bed wearing something. Um, Can I, I mean, give that a whiff. I mean, this, this stuff is, I think it's remarkable. It's, I think it's 1999 that it came out, Olivia Giacobetti. And it's just this evocation of a circus. You've got sort of a slightly <laughs> elephant dung thing, a slight sweetness that comes from this toffee mm. apple note, oh, some musk. I mean, it's but you also get that um, very different magazine-y, papery yeah. kind of. Absolutely. If you if you bury your head in a nice copy of GQ magazine or something, you get that as well. I mean, it's good stuff, isn't it? It's really it's really good stuff. I mean, this is you were saying it came out in the end of last century. Yeah. But this is real. You know, if you, you oh. were to describe a niche fragrance, this is niche. Smoke. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so far from any perfume that was around at the time. And still today, with all the weird and wacky shit that's coming out, mm. this thing still, pardon my French, this thing still is original and, and has something to say, I think. Oh, but it's still very beautiful. It's kind yeah. of got, definitely got that kind of gourmand, you know, kind of quality. Totally, kind of totally. Out. And this wonderful thing that oh. Olivia Giacobetti does so well, which is a kind of transparent quality. So it's not mm. cloying, it's not especially rich and heavy. No. It's just, it's yeah. sort of, it hovers in Even the air. Even though it does, there is a slight animalic funk to it, reference. it's not in your face overwhelming. No, no. It's, it's beautifully elegant, as you'd expect from a house like Lartisan. Um, I would say try, if you can, to get the original stuff. I mean, this is, this is not very old at all. This is maybe four or five years old. But the current stuff, with all of these, I the smell them. the black bottle, yeah. The black bottles, they all smell like a pale shadow of what they were. You want to search this out on, on yeah. eBay or where It's the, you know, the black box, and it's got a little white stripe down the side. But I love it. <sighs> Beautiful. And Good I've job. worn it and enjoyed it very much. Mm. So there we go. Right. What do we have for number five? My number five, in no particular order, but my number five. No. Um, I'm, I'm going to start with this one, because this is one of the first that, as it got cooler, I was really desperate to wear. And this is oh, yeah. Under My Skin by um, Francesca Bianchi. I really love it. I, I watched you all this the other day and so I, I, I put on about 14 sprays of this because it's, it's so, so good. So going quite light that day. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you have a, a little reminder. I'm very excited. Um, so this is, this is a sexy fragrance. This is a kind of... There's a kind of an oh. horacy, leathery quality to it. There's a real honeyed sweetness to it. There are a lot of kind of florals going on. There's a bit of animalic warmth. There's just a lot to it. That oris is the first thing that hits me. Like beautiful, leathery rooty, oris. powdery, yeah. Yeah. God, that's really good, isn't it? I'd forgotten how good this is. I had a sample and, and I loved it then, but this is, I mean, this is just like cooking in the glass, isn't it? And, 
Oh, I love it. It's so beautiful, good, sexy. But what, what what I like about this is it, Very it, when you look at the notes list and you talk about it, it could um, it, it could be you could think it's not kind of not suitable for office kind of scent. You could think it's overly raunchy, but somehow it doesn't. It's not too shouty. It lasts no, a no. really, really, really long time, but it's something how you can kind of wear it out, and it's actually one I've been complimented on quite a lot. I think, like a lot of Francesca Bianchi's things that I've smelled, um, it invites you in. Mm. It, it wants yeah. someone to bury their, their Ooh, nose in your neck. Sniffer. Yeah. But it is not one for a summer day. No, and <laughs> don't, I mean, don't blind, blind by anything. Mm. Um, try it out. My God, get a sample yeah. of this stuff because it's fantastic. But. I've oh. really, really, really enjoyed wearing this. Really and a lovely, beautiful. slightly old school, vintagey thing going on yeah, as well. Yeah, I mean, I, just I, I get that with it. quite a lot of her fragrances. There's a slight nod to the past. There's a slight, I wouldn't really describe this as a sheep, but there's a slight warm sheep perfume. Yeah, it just has some hint there going on, doesn't it? But I love the kind of honeyed notes as well, and the slightly very Yeah, notes. sweet, but not, but not really sweet. Beautiful. Oh, excellent choice, Dan. What is your so number? So let's put Bianchi there on the two little stroke, tip. Four. Number two, I'm sorry to keep going out of shot here, but I'm a professional, so yeah. I have to. So number two, I'm going to go in a slightly, a slightly, sort of slightly gourmandish direction. Um, and this is Nanban by L'Arquiste, which I love. I mean, it's basically, it's again one of these sort of trade routes things. Um, feel free to give that a little spritz mm. and remind you. So this is like, for me, it's black tea it's and big, pepper. Big yeah, oh, it's a beautiful so bottle. I could murder someone. You could, you could easily. Yeah. Death by Nanban in the, in the conservatory. <laughs> it's like spices, it's black tea, it's a very gentle leather. And it's got these dark resins, and they're quite bitter, even though there's oh. a sweetness at the same time. <laughs> so I, get, I, I immediately get that kind of trade route. Totally. Thing. Just hints of the orient, but this yeah. sort of warm... Like slightly kind of candied, uh, not candied, kind of um, kind of dried kind of fruit. But uh, yeah, like it, like little the candied orange peel or something yeah. going on. But it never goes it's like cloyingly nice. sweet no. for me. And on my skin, the bitterness takes over. Mm. And it goes into quite a dark sort of direction. It's not, it, yeah, it's not quite kind of Christmas cakey. No, but there's there's a hint of that savoury spice going on. That's really good. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I love the fact that it's just very, it's very wearable. And it sounds like a silly thing to say, but it's like very easy. It's, it's easy going, it's like comforting. Yeah, it's it's different. It's complex. It's well put together, um, but ultimately it, it is just a nice thing to envelop in. You know, I imagine on a, on an autumn day, if I could find it, I've lost my scarf. But if I could find it, having that on a scarf and wrapping mm. it around your neck, beautiful on a cold on a cold day, beautiful. And they do lots of good things. My next bottle from these guys is going to be one called L, which is this really animalic fougere that smells like kuros, vintage kuros. Nice. Which is really good. And it comes in a black bottle like this. And I'm very excited to get that. Amazing. Love it. Right. My number two, or all four, mm -hmm. um, I've got a bit of a, a woody theme coming up, actually. Nice. So, uh, yeah, I think, I like I think autumn, we think of wood, we think of the, you know, the yeah. leaves turning from green to brown. This is a very woody, very autumnal scent, I think. A cedary fragrance. This is Bovuvu or Bovuvu. Oh, yeah. I don't know how to pronounce it. January Scent Project, which is his kind of oh, I need um, uh, take on cedar. So there are lots of types of cedar. Oh, there's also this. Let's give that a Dank, spritz. Mushroomy, slightly kind of. Uh, I remember this from last time I smelled this. This mushroom thing was fantastic. Yeah. Um, Very good for you, by the way. You should eat mushrooms. You go. Have, have a little you. whiff there. Um, there's also a bit of brightness oh. of, of um, I don't know if it's basil or geranium, but there's something slightly. Oh, there's a beautiful. And a CD. Yeah, there's and a brightness. beautiful like fennelly geranium minty yeah. something going on at the top there. But then there are also florals to it. There's a slight <sighs> juniper cady, which gives that slightly uh, herbaceous kind of smoky yeah. kind of feel. But it, for me, I mean, the, the, it's the cedar which is the, the the real player, and this is real plaid shirt lumberjack yeah. ro running through the through the. But hey, I tell you what, it's really nice for cedar not to just be all about a big dose of hit you in the face, pencil shavings, no, no, and it's, ISOE super. It's very, very, very round. Even from first sprayer, it feels yeah. round, and there's a lot more to it. And there's maybe some honey, or there's some kind of sweetness to it as well. I, for me, I love the herbaceousness of that. That reminds me of like equipage back in the 80s. Yeah, you know, the, real, the real sort of herbaceous, barbershoppy aspect, but then obviously underpinned by this fantastic wood. Mm. That's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. And so refreshing to do it with a sort of minty fennelly opening rather than 
Here's just some citrus because we have to do some citrus. Yep. Love that. That's really good. And so oh, they oh, have oh. smolder rose as well, don't they? Yeah. And, and what I really like about this what's house, the green we're discussing one? this, uh, uh, Ida Antler. Ida Antler, I love that. I Lavender. love that they do 30 ml bottles. As a fragrance collector, I really like to have yeah, it's so useful. 30 ml bottles. We're never going to get through all these big 100 ml bottles. We love to have them, but my God. Yeah. Oh. Right, what is your number three? Number three from the collection. Um, I'm sort of deciding as I go, I'm going to save my two big guns. So this is this is baby gun. Dan introduced me to this fragrance. Oh, I nearly I nearly went for this. Uh, also, I mean, by perfume and I, I'm so grateful to, for Dan for introducing this to me because it's one of my favourite things in the world. And all, I mean, it doesn't look like it from the bottle, but that's actually a fair few sprays that I've had mm. recently. Um, oh, just this beautiful <laughs> like honeyed pine coniferous thing. We're, we're definitely still in the woods, aren't we? Yeah, totally. This is. I mean. Let's give this a little spritz. Oh. I also quite like the atomizer because it, it doesn't have a lot of give yeah. to it. It goes, I've clicked, and that's it. And that's so we should, we should say these, these perfume and Roma fragrances, they're all um, X ray strength. I mean, I think some yeah. of them are kind of almost 40%, and they all last forever. Yeah, I mean, this is 24 hours straight oh. through. But I mean, the, the quality of the ingredients are second but to none. But just an out and out, piney, woody, autumnal. This is just amazing. It's such good quality. And oh. it's the thing, the thing I love about this as well is the fact that uh, it was another fragrance which I really loved called Cape Heartache from Imaginary Authors, mm. which I still really enjoy, but this is like that on steroids minus the sort of strawberry mm. sweetness, which sometimes I can find cloying depending on, on yeah. the kind of the day and the mood I'm I mean, in. They're diff I mean, it, I really like Cape Heartache, but there's obviously a difference in quality. Yeah, I mean, the, the oil from, concentration from for is, start, I mean, the, the notes. Oh, I love it, it's so good. And, some, and it's smoky as well, mm. you know, Cape, Cape Heartache is more the green sort of piney stuff. This has this little, mm. this little smoke and resin Bonfire underneath. Night yeah. I, I mean, I love it. I think mm. the whole house is fantastic, and I think you're not going to get a huge amount of complex notes. They tend to go for a few notes done really yeah. well. You they're linear, they're, they're, but that's yeah, beautiful. They're quite linear, but they yeah. really develop. But, but if you like the opening of something, then yeah. you want it to last, and this stuff really does. Amazing. Beautiful. I love that. So what do we have for you? So I'm going to, I'm going to stay um, woody, I think. Um, you can get so treatments for this. Well, <laughs> sorry, ignore me. Uh, this is so. This is uh, quite a new um, purchase. Bought it in the summer, maybe just a couple of months ago. And I, I was, uh, I'm just going to say what it is. So this is from the house of four thousand one hundred sixty-two oh. days. This is burnt cedar rainbow yes. doves. So if you saw our four hundred sixty-two days videos, you will have seen my first reaction to this fragrance, um, which was oh marzipan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is what you get when you when you when you first um, spray it. You get this. It's really original, isn't it? This really like beautiful That's almondy. Wonderful. I'm not normally a gourmand lover, but this is this is a real kind of almondy oh, cake yeah. you can feel. But then it really the cedar really takes um, over this, and as opposed to bavuvu, this is quite a, 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 a burnt dark cedar. I really feel you're going right into the depths of the woods into a kind of a smouldering campfire kind of cedar. Yeah, absolutely. As opposed to Bavuvu where the, there are kind of florals and some honeyed notes coming on, this becomes more about this kind of dark burnt woods. And then there's also just a I little think. there's a little bit of cedar, which uh, a little bit of civet, which comes into it as well. Just to add a little... Do you know something I'm getting here? And this is going to feel really weird. I'm getting this smell that reminds me, my grandmother bless her soul, in Cornwall. She lived in this, in this kind of like end of the street house. And then, I don't know if, if all the places did, I think most of the places did, they had an outhouse with a toilet, a shed, and a coal house. And so I remember going out there as a little boy to shovel coal. Mm. But I'm getting, uh, from the almond cakiness, I'm just getting this image because I would bake with her a lot. And I'm getting this dual image that came into my mind then of baking with my mm. grandmother. And the smell of like marzipan and almonds and flour and pastry, mm. but then this dark sort of dank coal. Yeah, yeah something I, I a bit can, serious underneath. I know what you mean. I, I, coal I, I, isn't the right thing, but something. No, I know what you mean. Almost like a cave. Yeah, <laughs> into Some, cave. Something outdoors. Something that when you're a little, little boy, think you think is a little bit dangerous, and mm. so you know better. But one of the things I did like I about this that. is I when didn't we smell tried it properly it. when we did it. And I think if you watch, if you want to go and watch our video uh, with um, Sarah McCartney, yeah, you must. It's really fun. You, you will, um, you will see that when I first sprayed this, it's kind of like, oh yeah, kind of armoury, and then I'm like, oh actually, it's getting more cedary. Yeah. Oh, it's getting more cedary. And, oh, and more and more, more you yeah. liked it, didn't you? And you, it grew and grew on you. And I loved, I loved wearing, and this is one yeah. for you know on a cold day for a, oh, kind of a, a walk perfect. outside in the woods. 
Burnt cedar rainbow dump. And also, we'd smelt so much stuff that day that I think my nose had sort of started yeah. to shut down. I've appreciated that in a whole different mm. way now, just smelling it fresh out here. So there we go. Beautiful. We love you, Sarah McCartney. Yeah. We really do. Okay, I'm going over here to my box of tricks. Um, so number, is this number two? Number two is this little guy here from Prin Lomros. And this is Manishtana. That's so good. Which is an incense, resin, leathery affair. And Manishtana, I think, means my chant or my song. And it's, it's sort of based on jungle rituals and the, the smell of burning incense in the jungle and all of that, mm. all of that sort of world. Um, I say that like I'm acquainted with it. Yeah, well, is, is Manishtana, is that the um, Passover one? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but also, it's, but it's based around the sort of origin of the smell itself. Okay. Is also based on all these jungle rituals. Okay. But I mean. But it's just the. Oh. It's like um, it's probably the most beautiful incense in my oh. in my collection. I think now. Prin Lomros. I've got quite a few incenses. I mean, just talked about Sarah McCartney. Prin Lomros is another perfumer who we are big, 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 big fans of. And this is just the most sensational. It's the. Oh, the quality is so of good, isn't it? It's just absolutely, be it's really breathtaking. It's really, really stunning stuff. And also, I mean, this is this is an X-ray. This is 50 ml X-ray, mm. which is more than enough. I, you know, I think this thing, the speed at which I go through it. I mean, oh, I've, I've had a little bit already. Um, it's the quality. It's incredible. So beautiful. Absolutely isn't it? amazing. Really, you know, kind of we smell kind of quite a few incense fragrances, and this is really quite kind of jaw-dropping stuff. It's yeah. also some kind of like datey, fruity. Yeah, that's the thing, it's more than the incense. It, it's all of this resinous stickiness that's underneath it, mm. which just underpins it and it kind of keeps it going and going. That is really amazing. And on my skin, after half an hour, 40 minutes, the smokiness starts to take over as well. And it, it does become a sort of ritualistic mm. smell. And it's a million miles away from something like Incense Avenue or something that's very churchy. No, no, yeah. This feels like this feels like this could be anywhere in the world. So beautiful. Some it's temple cool, somewhere really. with resins burning. It's really amazing. Love him. And I, I got two recently. I got this one and Mandarava, which is this beautiful mm. floral, which maybe we'll talk about at some point. A lot of incense in that as well. A lot of incense mm. in that and oud and all the big florals that you can yeah. muster. And I mean, I smell it and like this as well. And I just go, oh my yeah. God. It's supposed to, it it's transports his, you away. It's his interpretation of the smell of heaven. And yeah, I think it's it really works. But this is really amazing. Yeah. Cool. You need a bit of incense in the autumn, don't you? I mean, it's, it's yeah. another one of those quintessential autumn ingredients for me. Amazing. So there right. we go. Okay, so in which case, my, my next mm. choice is also going to be a, an incense fragrance. Good. So this will be the first ever fragrance I have talked about which doesn't have a sprayer. Ah, so exciting. My, so my, my first ever attar. So what are we going to do? How are we going <laughs> to <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll work it out, don't worry. So, um, we, one of the houses that we always, always asked for um, recommendations, and one that kept coming up, people said, you guys really, really, really need to try Sultan Pasha. Oh, so, so we did, yes. and, and earlier in the summer, I bought, I decided to just blind buy oh, a, a three mil bottle of Ensemble Chypre. Um, I'm so, so excited to try this. It's really special. So, do you want me to dab it on your skin? If that's all right, if you yeah. have, if you can spare I mean, some, though. People, people kind of say, "Oh, you shouldn't be like, you know, contaminating it." But you know, what, what the heck? I'm clean. I had a shower three days ago, yeah. so I'm all Maybe good. A few, a few, that, that'll probably that. be enough. That's more than um, enough, isn't it? This so, is... this, I'm absolutely. This is almost kind of signature scent worthy for me. Oh, <laughs> um, so it so starts yeah. with a kind of a big kind of. Um, not citrusy open, I would say it's almost like a juicy open. Juicy opening, this big, rich tide of juiciness. And then... I mean, I love a juicy opening yeah. as much as the next man, but there's more going on there already. Yeah. But then there's just this deep, deep, Ooh. rich Chypre, which is so, you know, kind of perfect for autumn. Oh, with lots of florals, there's a massive glug of oak moss. It's so rich and complex, and it's a real uh, wrist, sniff, a wrist oh. sniffer. And as, the, as it progresses, you don't really get any incense. So I, I don't really sense incense immediately. But just at the end, you're, you're slightly aware of not this bright, sparkling incense, more of a round, smouldering, dark incense, which goes with the kind of the oak mossy, animalic notes of this. I mean, look at that. That, that oil is not budging off my yeah. skin. That's <laughs> yeah, not that's dripping it. off and disappearing, evaporating. That is super concentrated. But you just, I was wary of kind of 
I was almost a bit scared of, of you know, delving into the world of, world of guitars, but the quality of this is unbelievable. Like, <laughs> it feels to me like I've travelled back in time 200 years to ingredients that you couldn't find anywhere yeah. on earth nowadays. And of course you can because mm. Salt and Pasha has made this thing. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking now, this has made me think, has everything in perfumery in the last 150 years all been a big joke? And actually, <laughs> it's gone downhill. Yeah, I mean, is this the stuff that... Is this the sort of stuff that Guerlain were, were churning out at the turn of the oh. 20th century? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, got, it's there's, there's obviously by beautiful. the name Orson Chypre, there's, there's a real nod to the classic French film, oh and this, God. in many ways, is a classic French Chypre. Um, but it just that bit of smoky incense just lends, you know, sends it in a slightly different direction. But Do you know something else that's really nice, and I've just, just discovered it with this now, is that because you have, to really, you have to really bury your nose in your hand to get all of the complexity of what's going on, it's actually a very warming fragrance. Mm. Oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, sort yeah. of it's it's like it needs it needs hot blood pulsing yeah, underneath yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't shout at all. This isn't one of these things that oh, just goes know. flying and fills a room. It's it's just it's this sort of gentle enveloping. But I'm starting to get that forces you to just absorb. Oh yeah, I mean my God, that to me, I would just use that as a base on anything as well. Just for that alone, it's, it's just so much it. depth. My God. So. That was my number four. That's also, staggeringly beautiful. Also, Chifre by Sultan Pasha. Oh, gorgeous. Well, I don't know how, I mean, I don't know how if that can even be matched. I don't think it can. But in fact, we're doing a bit of time travel. <coughs> we're doing a bit of time travel. Dan, Dan knows this one very well already. <laughs> my, from, from Bogue or Bogwe. Bogwe, yeah. Um, by the wonderful Antonio Gardoni. Um, so this is, I mean, this is basically like super vintage, Floral oak moss Chypre We're style. Still in Chypre world, aren't we? Yeah, we stay. I think this is the thing we both feel in the autumn. Maybe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That time travel to the old classics yeah. is a great thing. Oh, that's so stunning. Yeah. I kind of. I don't want to talk about this. I want to keep it. But this, this But is I should really talk about this. No, this is this is beautiful stuff. Um, have a whiff. I give it a whiff. Give it a spritz. F feel free to stick it on skin as well. I mean, my God, it's it's so beautiful. This thing for me is all about all of these beautiful florals. But then it's underpinned with this quite pissy civet, and it's quite vintage. It's quite a vintage sort of you, pissy civet. You said it's a kind of time travel, and you are kind of transported back to. I mean, it really takes you away from 2019 wow. Brexit land. Yeah. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, yeah, that's always a good. I mean, thing. if ever there was a collaboration between between mm -hmm. the UK and France, it's that. I mean, that thing is yeah. like is from La Belle Epoque, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, exactly. From an Italian architect, mm -hmm. no less. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's amazing. It's so rich. It's so bold. It's so um, fierce. It's so it feels like totally fierce. You know, fearless, it's a real it? rip your shirt off. Absolutely, my I God. won't do it for the no. It's now. fine. I'll, I'll, just, I'll, just say, I'll save them. But but it's real. Oh. It's rugged, rugged stuff. But it kind of it has a balance of everything. It has where it has bitterness. It also somehow finds a sweetness. Where it has dark, it also has light. But and that's what you it expect from a great sheep. Yeah, I think that's why sheep is you know. Maybe quite good for the autumn because you've got that mm. balance of sweet and bitter and bright. And yeah, dark. and autumn is is neither nor. It's not necessarily freezing, yeah. but it's certainly not. Yeah. It's certainly not like roasting hot either. And something like this just mm. becomes one with your skin. I find brilliant choice. Brilliant choice. I also have mem, which I love, mm. and I toyed with that, but I, I feel that's a slightly animatic spring. Yeah. Kind of yeah. thing, but I would happily wear it. T Rex oh, yeah. obviously is yeah. something on our radar as well, isn't it? From him. Yeah. Wintry mem. Uh, but I have to keep coming back to that. To the Salt and Pasha. It's awesome stuff. Can I have that in a 100ml sprayer? <laughs> yeah, Is that I, possible? I don't, I don't know. Right, so I my last that. choice, again, something autumnal, um, tobacco. Mm. Is something we normally think. Very good note. Um, for, uh, so I'm just going to come out. So this is one. Um, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just I'm going to say what it is first. So this is oh, Sir Winston uh, yes. by Sportnikov, which we reviewed in our video. So I was. I'm in and between buying this and Symphony de Neroli, but this one came up in a Bortnikov fan page group, so I decided to go for this. So, um, it's... Oh, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> I've I worn, remember I've this from the few, other day. I've had a few times when I've been really dressed up this all, um, in the last few weeks, and I've worn this as my, kind of, my dressed up autumn fragrance. So, as the name, as so the name suggests, you would you maybe think of something dark and dirty and smoky. The, this is about tobacco. Um, and there's a lot of tea, but there's this kind of rich Bortnikov florals, which you get, you yeah. get quite a lot. You get frangipani in lots of his fragrances, and this kind of sweet, thick floral, 
as well as some tuberos, but once it gets to the kind of tobacco and there's some really well-rounded oud, which is oh. warmth and body. I, I love it. I love the fact as well that this is this is not what I first expected, which was mm. just all dark, boozy, brandy, it's leather not, armchairs. It's, it's it's got real sort of life and 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 energy about it, hasn't it? Mm. This is a young, brilliant man, a young yeah, mind full of yeah. full of amazing ideas. Oh, beautiful. Mm. And yeah, so rounded, isn't it? So elegant. Where yeah. start, like say like we we found with our Russian Adam things, they sort of hit you across the chops with bold, daring stuff. This is very mm. classical and elegant, yeah, yeah. but with very, completely very modern twist very as well. Wearable. I love and that. I will be wearing a lot, and I will be wearing it more throughout the autumn. Right, fantastic. I did. I did have one more choice, which. which did oh, you have a little honourable mention. Yeah. Yes. Do you, have you got one? I have one as well. Or do you want to go first? Okay. So, well, this is a real cheapie, um, but I have been wearing it, and the condition of this video was stuff that we've been wearing. Dan has probably already smelled this. Oh, yeah. Real cheapy. I can't remember how much this cost me. Um, if it was under a tenner, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Giorgio, Beverly Hills. <laughs> um, masterpiece. Yeah. I think we've smelt probably such good perfumes that this might come across as <laughs> horrendous. But no, no, I love it. I have a real loyalty for it. The, you know, the juice inside is green, which means it's got to be good. Um, but it's like yeah, reminiscent. It's, it's reminiscent of all of these old school things like Paco Rabanne and and your Aramis and your polo green. Oh yeah, straight there. But I yeah. actually, I love it. I've worn it a few times. It's such an easy thing to wear. I disagree with you. You, you, I, you said this was going to smell awful after all these things. It doesn't. No, no. It, it doesn't. I mean, it is nice, isn't it? It, yeah. do, it does its job beautifully well. And for me, I mean, that's the thing. I have to have a balance in my life as a perfume lover of like crazy stuff and like out of this world good stuff and simple, beautifully made things like this, which are cheap and you can wear as much as you like. I've done the same. I've got a balance of expensive things like this. And more expensive. Things. And then very expensive things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think I'm, yeah, I think that will. But the, I mean, the that's thing is, great choice. These, these perfumes are expensive in the most part. But you're really getting what you pay for. There's nothing here for yeah. a second where I thought the quality of every single. No, we bought all of these, perfume. so you know. Yeah, we, 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 we've we've been out there and we've spent our money on these that, because we've loved them, and the quality is in the juice. Mm. There's no sort of fancy packaging covered in diamonds and crap like that. No. You know, the, the the quality is in the perfume, and I think that's the main thing. And I'll pay any price if I think that that's been done fairly. You know. So my. Oh. On my honourable mention, it really nearly went in because it is one that I've worn a lot and I really like wearing this a lot. Very versatile fragrance uh, in a way, surprisingly. It's from the World in Sense ah, and this yeah. is Gravity Plus. And what is really interesting about this is when you, um, when you first put it on, you think you're wearing a kind of, you're applying a citrusy aromatic, aromatic fougere mm. perhaps. And then a few hours in, you realise you're wearing an oud fragrance. <laughs> I need to smell this again. Which, which, you know, I can't say Do about, ma about many fragrances. Um, I remember loving this when we was, but we were outside, weren't we, that day when yeah. we did them in the courtyard? But I've worn this a lot because when you first apply it, it's got this kind of classic, kind Thank of you. French aromatic fougere kind of feel, quite bright, very elegant, really, mm. really well done. But then later on, it's a big fragrance actually, compared to all the other things you sprayed, it's quite a big fragrance. Um, it is, isn't it? Yeah. But later on, it turns into this rich, round, warm oud fragrance, which you just would not expect. God, that's really good. Mm -hmm. um, that's really good. And which is why I think of it as an autumnal fragrance, as opposed yeah. to, you know, this isn't quite one for summer. But that could be like a really nice mm. spring fragrance as well, if it's just cold and crisp. Yeah, yeah. And you, you want that warming, but also mm. with a little bit of a fresh, a sort of fresh nod at the start. Such an interesting house. Creamy it? opening as well. Yeah. It's not really bracing well, in a way, it's no. like creamy fresh. Even though it's creme fresh, yeah, yeah, creme fresh. It's nothing like creme fresh no. at all. No. So those are our, oh. our autumn um, top ten fragrances plus an extra uh, yeah. honourable mention. Stuff we've been wearing, stuff that we've been enjoying. Yeah. Which is all we can ever ask, isn't so it? Tell us what you've been wearing for autumn, yeah. stroke, fall. Um, and new houses keep hitting us with new yeah, things, things we to should explore. explore. You know. Yeah. But until next time. Bye. Happy sniffing.